Paul Jones Drug is Elk City's most experienced compounding pharmacy, meaning they can custom make your prescription medications to your doctor's specifications, safely and effectively providing you with exactly what you need. And for your convenience, Paul Jones Drug has a drive through pickup window as well as curbside service for testing and vaccinations and offers free local delivery. Just a couple reasons you should choose Paul Jones Drug, 809 North Main Street in Elk City. I'm Rodney Skinner with Paul Jones Drug, and I promise we provide care you can trust. If you build it, he will. It's the Skinny on Sports Podcast with Aaron Cow. I throw balls far. You want good words? Data language. Talk real sports with a real man. Come after me. I'm a man. I'm 40. Now, here's the be-all, end-all, know-it-all of high school, college, and pro sports. Aaron Skinny Count with the Skinny on Sports. We're talking about practice, man. I'm the MVP. Glad to have you along for the next hour. We get into all kinds of football, 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 high school football. Coming upon week three, which is the final non-district week of the season. Look at the Oklahomans' top tens and some of the different classifications also what are the best games uh, around the state as well we'll wrap up this college football weekend texas when does mike gundy have to decide who is going to be his quarterback how long can this last playing three guys how good is colorado really is there a new best conference in college football and then what's your top 10 NFL will wrap up the week, man. A.B., he's about the only Jets fan I know. Poor guy. Why? They won. Poor guy. Yeah. What do you do if you're the Jets at the quarterback spot? Uh, I have a cre- I have a question. Speaking of that game, I think the more, uh, I don't know, it's hard to say with Aaron Rodgers out for the year what it looks like to be an Achilles injury. But you just you you didn't really know for sure what they were going to be. That defense is really good. Not sure about the offense, but you've seen what the Bills have been, and you know they're really good. Is Josh Allen ever going to get criticized? I want you to put on your. I want everybody listening to close their eyes and go back to last night at about nine thirty. And as you're closing your eyes, imagine instead of Josh Allen being the one that threw three interceptions and a fumble to lose to a team that lost their starting quarterback the fourth play of the game and had to replace him with Zach Wilson. Keep your eyes closed. Now imagine if that quarterback on the other team was Dak Prescott and what you'd be reading and hearing said today i got some numbers that'll blow your mind with those two uh give me a wild overreaction to what you saw in week one that you that you think might not really be a wild overreaction see what i'm saying and now give me something a a wild overreaction that people are going to have after week one that you think will be that it'll be a wild overreaction and Everything will kind of even out, right? Uh, and then your top five teams in the NFL. 225-9698 is the phone or the text line. That is 225-9698. Give us a call, shoot us a text. We can talk about any of those things. Whatever else might be on your mind, feel free to chime in at 225-9698. If you're going to be outside the listening area, a couple ways to stay in touch with the show. Log on to kadsam.com or download the app. The app's got it all. Radio, Penny News. At Penny News, brand new edition. I'll hit the website last night at midnight, thepennynews.com. Also, Big Elk and Paragon TV be on the air this week. We'll tell you when, where. I know today, I can tell you where, today. Listen, if you don't have anything to do this afternoon, it's going to be nice. Highs in the 70s. Go out to the fiveplex or watch on Big Elk TV because... Elk City Weatherford fast pitch. It's a huge game with massive district implications. Five o'clock first pitch for the Elkettes. 
and the Le- uh, the Lady Eagles. Weatherford won the game over in Weatherford. Oh gosh, two or three weeks back on a walk off home run. The Elkettes, if they can figure out a way to win this one, that puts them in a really good spot to not only continue to battle for the district crown, but also puts them in a great spot to to guarantee them no worse than second, which means hosting regionals. So big game, big, big, big game for the Elkettes today with Weatherford coming to town. Five o'clock, go out and watch it if you can, but if not, Big Elk, P, uh, Big Elk TV will have it for you live. And then, of course, Skinny on Sports podcast. You can uh, check it out everywhere podcasts drop. How are you today, Jared? I'm well. How are you? Doing well. Did you get any rain? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, if you can call it that, like misting. I mean, yeah, I'm sure it rained during the day. Last night, though, it, yeah. you know, misting. Didn't, I mean, we played softball. It didn't rain us out, so. But it was it was spitting on us, basically, towards the end of that second game. Uh, kind of cool, too. I kind of regret not taking a hoodie. But, yeah, I like the weather change. Absolutely. Absolutely. Did you do any baseball or anything last night? Or Absolutely not. What did you do? We made chili. Good weather for that. We made chili, and then uh, had uh, family over. Then griped about my fantasy football team and tried to devise <laughs> strategies to get better. Watched the game, and it just kind of – man, it was amazing how – and you could tell this happened in that in that arena or in the stadium. But how jacked up. I mean, you go from Rogers with the American flag in New York on 9-11. The stadium singing the anthem. And all the energy that that created. And then it was like the balloon just got popped. Yeah, that was, uh, it was just a, that was a it, it was a surreal yeah. scene, right? I mean, I, all right, let's think of it. I heard the guys trying to think of or earlier. When has there been this much hype around a guy like changing teams? In that first game with the or, – or just – I mean, it's been a while. Yeah. China. I mean, you know, you maybe, know, maybe Brady going down to Tampa Bay. See, that, that was one they brought up, but it didn't seem – because because it was Tampa. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. It, but they're not New York. Right, right. The market was different. And right. I think you know the one – Maybe you know, not as big as hyped because also coming with Brady was Gronk and it was – there was a – like, okay, they're going to succeed there, and they did. But this was, yeah, I could see, yeah, the Jets fans, though, the, and it's a different fan base, too, where the Jets fan had been tortured for so long, and they finally saw a savior coming to rescue them, yeah. and then that happens. Yeah, and, and I think the misery of the Jets has to be thrown in with this. Here's one I thought of. Jared just put it on the text line. And, and I, I thought of it in a different way, but – Durant coming back to Oklahoma City. Like that first game. Yeah, the first game back. Right. But the but the one that I would I thought of that one I'm like, yeah, it's it the one that I compared it to in my own mind. And it wasn't a guy cha- it wasn't a guy changing teams. But it was a guy coming back. And that was when Jordan retired to go play baseball. And then all the hype with him coming back coming to the back. Bulls to play Indiana. Yeah. That was the one that I kind of just with the all the hype around it and all the build up. But the difference was that last that that hype for Jordan was like a day or two. This was four months long with hard knocks thrown in like a almost an image scrubbing hard knocks to make you go from or certain people did not like how Aaron Rodgers handled uh, the vaccine stuff. That's your decision. But that soured Aaron Rodgers' reputation in a bunch of people's minds. And then all of a sudden, hard knocks, you're seeing him kind of be a good dude. And lots of people kind of change their tune back to what I think they had before. Whereas you're rooting for Aaron Rodgers all of a sudden. Yeah. 
And then for that to happen, play number four, just, I mean, the, the, the one guy on ESPN summed it up, which is firing the bird out there at the camera. Like, get that out of my face. One of the fans. You know what I mean? I mean, that just basically summed up yeah. how I'd have been feeling, too. And then they win this incredible game. <laughs> and then they somehow win. <laughs> From the dude that was undrafted returning a punt. You know, that's only the third time that's ever happened. That a punt return in OT won a game. Here's, let me sum up the game for you, for me. I uh, saw the alert on my phone. Rodgers goes down. Fourth yeah. play. Ankle, apparent ankle injury. I thought, ah, oh boy. Well, he'll probably be back. Whatever. Yeah, see, so you but, weren't watching, right? No, I was like, well, they're going to lose. There's no way Zach Wilson's yeah. going to leave against the Bills. Forget about it. I've never been a Zach Wilson fan as a player. So I get what home. Have you, wait, wait, wait. What have you been a fan of his? As? Well, no, no, no. I'm not. I'm, I'm not. <laughs> People think, you know how sports works when you say you don't like somebody? Well, why? Because he's a horrible person? No, I, I don't think he was a good player to get drafted that high by the Jets. I've been adamant about that. I don't care about his off field stuff. You know, I really him. thought, though. If this was his chance, because I'd have thought he'd have been much, much better replacing a 40-year-old. Yeah. You know, maybe the, the win last night showed you just the, the amount of time that in the offseason that Rodgers came in and you saw on, on Hard Knocks how he kind of mentored him and was rooting for him. Maybe that was just enough to wake up Zach Wilson Yeah, I don't bit. think so. He was terrible, but... Josh Allen was worse. Yeah. But then I get home, and um, once everything settles down, turn on the TV just in time to see, doink, in there, <laughs> going the overtime. Like, yes, bonus football. I love it. Set down, turn on the TV. That that's and Then uh, they force the pun, then the rest is history. Crazy ending to a wild game for all the reasons we've said. Oh, so, uh, listen. The, the, did you but see, I got the best of the game is what I'm saying. I got the best of the game. Have you got to go see the – that catch that Garrett Wilson made for the touchdown. I saw the highlight Holy this morning. Moses. It was it was uh, so good. Even my nine year old went whoa! <laughs> <Yeah>. oh. <laughs> like she knew how cool that was. Yeah, I did see the highlights this morning. Yeah, it was pretty crazy to watch. I mean, like thinking about the what what the Jets do next and, and last night with with Zach Wilson. It was pretty hilarious to listen. I mean, because Peyton Manning, as soon as so Wilson comes in. He throws just an egregious pick. Like they they show the, the the regular angle and Eli's like, Well, I think there was a window there. And then they kind of show it from behind and Peyton was like, Yeah, there was no window. <laughs> there was nothing but blue jerseys. And so at that point he openly starts politicking for the Jets to never pass again for the rest of the game. <laughs> you know, just run it. Which I mean, Brees Hall, that's another storyline. He was awesome. Really, really awesome. Uh Brees Hall was. And you know the, that was obviously a question mark with the injury he suffered. How much would he, the, the the snap distribution was a little hard to figure between him and Dalvin Cook, but Brees Hall clearly looked like the better running back last night. He looks like he's all the way back, so that's something that they can hang their hat on their offensive line, which was the question mark going in. And sure enough, that question unfortunately got answered on the fourth play when a guy just runs free for Rodgers, and then that that injury happens. Uh, but it it was just a, it was such a surreal night. With it being nine eleven, with it starting the way it started pregame, with him coming out with the flag and all the juice and all the, the just the hysteria in that arena or in that stadium to just be cut to nothing so quickly, and then the game somehow get around to overtime and end with the punt return. Uh, it was it was a pretty cool night. Now here's a question: What do you do if you're the Jets? Do you just roll with Zach, with Zach Wilson? I mean, your free agent market looks like I've got odds. You got I've Kim, got odds. I've got, got odds. Newton. You have Wentz is still available. I saw this list this morning. I'm just going off of memory. Did you see it with the odds or just the no, list? I, just a list. Of so, who do you available. think is the favorite according to BetOnline.ag? Who would be the favorite for the Jets to acquire right now? And this guy. Has won a Super Bowl. Well, it can't be Tom Brady. Tom Brady is like twenty to one. Yeah. Uh, did I did I say him? No. It's not Wentz. No. Nope. Does he does that count? 
was winning a Super Bowl. I don't know. Who is it? The guy that replaced him. Oh. Nick Foles. Nick Foles. My Nick do- Foles. My at- doppelganger. <laughs> Nick Foles at 3-1. to one. Colt McCoy at 4-1. to one. Taysom Hill at 5-1. to one. Davis Mills at 7-1. to one. There's Wentz at 8-1. to one. Cooper Rush at 10-1. to one. That's an interesting one. If you're a Cowboys fan, what could you extract if they uh, if the Jets were all of a sudden got desperate? Tom Brady twenty to one, Jameis twenty two. Actually, have Tim B- Tim Tebow at one fifty. You know, it was pretty. You know, Ryan Fitz- Fitzpatrick was one of the guests on the Manning Cast last night. <clears throat> that was the name. Matt Ryan was another name because he's run that offense. He's fifty to one. What do you do? Do you reach for one of these guys, or do you just roll with Zach Wilson? Well, Wilson was a high pick. So there was faith in him when they got him, thinking he'd be the next guy to, you know, lead him. So, it, I don't know. And how like, much – You need depth, for sure. And, and, how, well, and how much and, did what he – how much did his performance last night, albeit not great, but – bringing his team back in that wild environment and that sad environment at times, how much does that, you know, build not only his confidence, but the, because I'm I'm not, not even sure if it's about his confidence. It's all about, you built this roster with all pros littered throughout it for Rogers to be the guy. Mm -hmm. And can you look at those other players in that locker room and go, yeah, it sucks that Aaron got hurt, but Zach will take us to the Super Bowl. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, that's that's what, in my mind, that's the question that Woody Johnson and everybody else there with the Jets is asking themselves right now is, will we lose this team if we just roll with Zach Wilson? I don't know the answer to that. I don't know either. But here's your problem. The names that we just named off – Ugh. Not great. Yeah, what's the best that you can do? I mean, Is I'm not Zach ki- Wilson the best that you can get. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. He, you know, yeah, Foles has won a Super Bowl, but that was kind of a flash in the pan, one hit wonder type thing, right? He's got other chances and it hadn't worked that way. I mean, is Cooper Rush really the best option here to trade for Cooper Rush? Davis Mills, a young guy that shows – I mean, Taysom Hill, he's not really a quarterback, is he? What if um, Dallas finds a way to unload Trey Lance for some equity? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that was in the plan the whole time. Just we're going to keep him at third string. We're never going to – he's never going to take a snap because of a silly new rule, by the way. I never knew that rule. That was a new rule. If QB1 and QB2 are healthy, QB3 cannot take a snap. That's basically the long and the short of it. Oh, really? Yeah. So that's why you always had to have an emergency quarterback and not a third quarterback. So he can't take a snap well, that's unless, stupid. unless one and two get hurt in some way. And he's eligible. Oh, oh well, I see what you're saying. So, on whatever, you know, however you do your Because I was chart, wondering I on you. Sunday night, it's 40 to nothing. Are we going to even see Trey Lance? Will they explain that? So, well, because of this new rule, you're not going to see him. I got you. I got you. So I wonder if he was a guy that they traded for and it was a, a I don't know, trade and stat, dat, stash him until someone else calls him and goes, hey, uh, we need a guy. We know you got this kid that, okay, well, let's talk. I'm not suggesting that's what the Jets are going to do, but. Oh, I don't think Dallas would trade him. I think if Dallas trades you, one of their quarterbacks, think, it'll you, be Rush. Do you think you think Dallas got Lance as the heir apparent to Dak, I think there he has. I, I think that they there is a ceiling there that we don't know what it is. We know what Cooper Rush's ceiling is. Okay, and you don't want him to be the starting quarterback for very long. You don't know if Trey Lance. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But if Trey Lance is good, his ceiling is so much higher than Cooper Rush. That's why I think you see Rush's name on this list. And there, you know what? There might even be a rule where you couldn't trade him yet. No, I, yeah, you know, NBA yeah. has those. It seems like if you trade, and then you can't yeah, trade for a couple months. Yeah. I don't know if that's true in the NFL, but what I'm saying is Zach Wilson looks like just as good an option as anybody else on this list. Outside of maybe, I mean, is 
Tom Brady's a better choice than Zach Wilson, surely, right? Even as bad as he looked last year? Or is he? Are we past it? I think he's past it. Oh, I do too. I don't think that's a realistic option. So it, I really think it's going to be Zach Wilson. Oh, yeah, Will Greer. I was on the Will Greer bandwagon with Dallas. I was wanting him to stay in Cooper Rush go. Okay, let's talk about Josh Allen. I said his name already, so I can't like do the player A versus player B because I've already made the comparison to what would happen if that had been Dak Prescott. Wouldn't you, do you, would you say that, I don't know, 95% of the NFL watching public perceives Josh, Josh Allen to be a way better quarterback than Dak Prescott? Oh, of course. I would think that that would be true as well, at least the perception. The numbers are staggering when you actually compare those two players. And a big part of it is what, what the, the criticisms that Dak gets, I guess, just don't matter when you talk about Josh Allen. Dak has a better completion percentage for his career. Now, he's played – this is his eighth year in this uh, for Dak and sixth for Josh Allen. But Prescott's completing just under 67% for his career where Josh Allen's completing just under 63. Yardage-wise, they're probably on about the same track just because they're not in the same year. Dak's obviously thrown for more. Dak's thrown for more touchdowns and only two fewer interceptions after last night. And, you see, and then you look at the their playoff performances. Josh Allen... His touchdown interception ratio was way better in the playoffs than I realized because a lot of people criticize him for that stuff. And 17 touchdowns to four picks, that's pretty good. He's four and four in the playoffs. Dak, 11 touchdowns to five picks. He's two and four in the playoffs, both completing 63% of their balls. I'm not even sitting here telling you that I think Dak is better than Josh Allen. But when in the world is Josh Allen going to get any criticism for what he's doing to the, to the Bills? You know, two years ago, he had an incredible it, – it, it's like his entire career and in, in the perception of Josh Allen only comes from one game. From one game. And that was that unbelievable ASC Divisional Playoff game in Kansas City. Mm -hmm. Everything else just goes out the window because of that. Per, and it was an incredible performance. I am not going to say anything bad about that day, that game – because he was stood toe to toe, and even had Mahomes beat, and before Mahomes pulled the rabbit out of his hat. But that's not the only game of his career, <clears throat> and I will assure you, if Dak Prescott did last night what Josh Allen did last night, oh, yeah. that's all any shows like this would talk about, mm -hmm. and it would be where is would, you might even hear people going, "Well, let's give Trey Lance a chance." Mm -hmm. Why is that? Well, it's the it's the it's it's the Cowboys. It's the Dallas Cowboys, the most profitable sports franchise in the world, and the most hated. And that's just comes with the territory. You saw it with Romo. You're seeing it with Dak. You put on the star. You're the quarterback. The moment you make a mistake, people lash out and go crazy. It just doesn't apply anywhere else. That's the difference. That's the difference between the Dallas Cowboys, America's team, and everybody else. That's the difference, pure and simple. That's why Josh Allen doesn't get criticized, because he doesn't wear the silver and blue. He's a Bills. He's a, he's a Bill. That's that's as simple as I can make it. But he should get criticized, and he's lucky. Aaron Rodgers got his Achilles hurt. Yeah. That's what everyone's talking about right now. That's right. They're not talking about his. Yeah, question Would you rather have Dak or Josh Allen? You'd rather have Josh Allen, I guess, unless he's just going to throw. I mean, that, that's what I'm saying. What is the difference between the two right now? Yeah, yeah. Perception. Because what the reality is on the field is very, 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 very similar. Very similar. You know, and because Dak is making a boatload of money, so is Josh Allen. 
and it's it's funny because the way that the quarterback salaries go up and up and up and up and up every time somebody signs a new one, it. it now I don't want it to be fifty nine million cap hit for Dak Prescott next year unless he wins a Super Bowl. This year, mm-hmm. that doesn't make any sense. But at the same time, forty million for Dak Prescott isn't looking near as bad as some of these others. No. Just because the the market continually gets reset and reset and reset. And so you're going to have, you know, year one, somebody's going to be way overpaid by the year three or four because of the way it goes. All of a sudden, they're a pretty decent bargain, and that's kind of where Dak is at this moment with everybody else. Dak's like seventh or eighth highest paid quarterback. And guess what? He's about the seventh or eighth best one, right? Right. What's What's going to be funny is, and here's a little sneak peek of overreactions. What if Dallas goes on a run? It's not an overreaction because we predicted it. What if they go on a run and get to the Super Bowl? And I said yesterday, their defense is Super Bowl quality. Uh, it might be an overreaction after one game, but we saw how good they were last year. If they could play like that, they're really, really good and they're going to give themselves a chance to win almost every game. The offense is good enough. It's okay. But Tenth. I'm sorry. Okay. Tenth. This year, Dak is making $40 million. You know who else is making $40 million? Matt Stafford, Daniel Jones. Josh Allen making $43 million. Deshaun Watson, 46. Kyler Murray, 46.1. Russell Wilson, $49 million. Would I rather have Dak or Hurts? I'd rather have Dak right this second. But I'm on record as not liking, not trusting Hurts yet. He had one phenomenal season. Phenomenal. And he has dudes all over the place for uh, you know around him, as Dak does too. Let's not kid ourselves. But I just, I'm not going to believe Jalen Hurts is going is a good thrower of the football until I guess he retires and he is. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. He, him and Lamar are a lot the same for me. I've just seen too much inconsistency to actually believe that they can really be long time, long term NFL quarterbacks. You know. So, and and I would much rather have Dak at forty than Jalen Hurts at fifty-one million. I mean, that's the, that's the crazy thing about looking at this list. You know who's eighth on the list? The eighth highest paid quarterback. Who would that be? Patrick Mahomes. It's a pretty good bargain. Yep. Pretty good bargain. All right, what's your overreaction, Jared? What overreaction to Week One that you? think isn't necessarily an overreaction. It might just be a really astute observation you've made. Well, I kind of just hinted at it. I think Dallas has the best defense in the league. That's what I put, too. And I think as time goes on, barring any major injuries, I think that continues. Obviously, with Parsons and Diggs, help me with the name on the other side of Diggs. Made his debut. I just read this about him yesterday, today, this morning. Um, Gil- Stephon Gilmore. Yes, no. I I think he compliments Diggs in that secondary enough where, you know, last year it kind of turned into don't throw it towards Diggs. You got to make everyone else defend you. Don't Diggs is too good. I think Gilmore would be like, "All right, yeah, throw it to me. I'm going to show you." Well, I mean, he's been a all pro. Right. So it's it He might have even up. been the defensive player of the year one year. It all shores up, right? I mean, it kind of balances out that defense. Um We'll see about the run defense. That's it. We'll that's, see. that's exactly right. We'll see. But my overreactive, quote-unquote, statement that I think might pan out is Dallas has the best defense in the league. Because the two teams that you would you could envision being playoff opponents down the line are two teams that can run it right at you, Philly and, and San Francisco. Mm-hmm. And so I have has Dallas shored up that, but – as far as just the way the stats are going to look and the, and the explosive defensive plays and whatnot, it's hard to imagine somebody having more of them than Dallas. At least, you know, like I said, it's wild overreaction over after uh, after one one week, but I think it might actually be true. Now, give me one 
people are going to overreact to a situation after week one that you kind of go, eh, I don't really think that's the case. Cincinnati is overrated. Are you freaking kidding me? That's people are saying that now. I don't are you think. are you serious? That's what you picked. Is that what you picked too? Yes. Oh. Cincinnati will struggle. That's what I put. I don't think it's true. I think they don't. They always typically struggle with Cleveland early. Uh, in the Joe year? Burrow's beat Cleveland once his whole yeah. career. Yeah. I'm not burying him by any. Was that means. horrible quarterback there for a while, uh, Baker Mayfield? Yeah. Right. I'm not burying him by any means. I think they're yeah, fine. Either. I think they're okay. But I'm people are going to scream it. They're going to say it. Yeah, I'm the same way. I, I think I just it's just one game with Cincy. Now, okay. I noticed I involved two of my Super Bowl content my, uh, well, participants. <laughs> here's here's the deal. I had one, and then I had to I had to mark it off because of who I had as the top team in the NFL. <laughs> and then I went to Dallas's D. I actually had the, originally I had the Rams would win the NFC West. The Rams look good in the second half against Seattle, but it's hard for me to say that when I have. Well, we didn't like Geno Smith in <clears throat> Seattle. You didn't like them either, Mm-mm. right? No. So the Rams better look good. So are the Ram? I think the Rams are forgotten. Yeah. I mean, we didn't even. Yeah, I mean, are we were we a hundred percent sure that? Uh, that Matt Stafford was even playing football anymore until Sunday? No. Talk about a dude you don't hear about anymore. No, I didn't know anything. No. <clears throat> no one knew. All right, give me your top five. I'll go five to one. Let's yeah. go. Hang with- on, did you see Scott just did you did you see hear the audio? Yes. When Aaron Donald broke through there, Gino. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> ah! And oh no. It made me like Gino Smith even more because I think I, Oh, I would have. That's said, what I'd be doing. I would have, except it would have been a lot, lot worse words. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was cool. Made me think he's this is a human. You know. Yeah. He, he, okay. Yeah. Here's an interesting one, and I don't know if he means overreaction, good or over or bad. And it's just Tua playing like that all year. Here's the deal about Tua. He's played like that for an extended amount of time. You just forget because he's heard about half of it. Yeah. Like, if he is there, that's how they play. Mm-hmm. The, the only really question, at least if you look back in the last couple of years, the only really question mark is whether or not he can play. Because when he does, they win, and they look like that over and over and over. Agreed. <clears throat> Agreed. My top, right. my top five, I went with Dolphins, speaking of Tua, at five. Uh, listen, Kansas City can't go 0-1 and – be in my top three at least so you're at four dallas is three philadelphia two and you could almost flip-flop that the way philly tried to lose that game but they won so they're they're still they're they're there and then san francisco number one i went ahead and dropped kansas city out <clears throat> okay just they, they can listen they'll be right back in but uh, i've got philly five do they win that game without that pick six that kind of bounced around mm. I've got Baltimore at four. They didn't have Andrews. They played good defense. They played a terrible team with Houston. I've got Miami three. That offense is incredible. Do they? And they've got a bunch of good defensive guys. But maybe I mean, listen, Chargers have great great offense as well with Herbert and all those weapons. I've got Dallas two. They were the most dominant team, but they played a bad. They they played in bad conditions, and the offense. I get it. They didn't have to do anything. Could they have? Yeah, I don't know. Number one, San Francisco. It was the as dominant a win as Dallas. It's a lot, lot better team on a lot better track. They were awesome, and it's hard to have for me. It's impossible to have anybody but but uh, San Francisco being number one out of the gate. Now, mine uh, it could be pretty fluid. It's week one, <clears throat> but it is. But they look good. But I that, mean, yeah, those are the five best in our eyes. And man. The, there's just certain times and certain teams play each other. But seeing those San Francisco and Pittsburgh uniforms on the field yeah. at the same time, there's yeah. something cool about that. Yeah, absolutely. We'll be back. Paul Jones Drug Tuesday. Tell you all about Rodney and the gang next.
Paul Jones Drug offers a free service that makes taking your daily medications safe and easy. It's called convenience packaging, meaning they can combine all your daily medications and put them in sealed separate daily packages. This process replaces you from having to fill your daily medication dispenser. And as always, Paul Jones Drug prepares individual blister packaging for long-term care patients. With their drive through window, curbside service, and free local delivery, it's just more reasons you should choose Paul Jones Drug, 809 North Main Street, Milk City. I'm Rodney Skinner with Paul Jones Drug, and I promise we provide care you can trust. The Skinny on Sports. No, 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 Welcome back. Skinny on Sports, 98.1 FM, the sports animal, hanging out here on a Paul Jones Drug Tuesday. Paul Jones Drug, located at 809, hang on a minute, 809 North Main, right here in Elk City. Paul Paul Jones Drug is care you can trust. They're the oldest compounding pharmacy in Elk City. Free local delivery, drive through pickup, curbside testing, and vaccinations. And, of course, they've got the blister packs, which is your long-term care unit packaging. Rodney and the gang, go visit them, 809 North Main, Paul Jones Drug, or give them a call, 225-2121. Question on the text line about college football, because that's where we're headed to next. It says, uh, News 9, Dean Blevins, reported that Jeff Levy almost lost his job yesterday. What do you think of that? I think Dean is off his rocker. Now, yeah, here's why I say that. Because of what happened on what happened on Monday, which was yesterday, and the contrition and the different tone that Levy had. Now, if you want to misconstrue, if you want to construe that as you have to do this or you're fired, whatever. I don't think it ever came to that. I think it simply got to the point of, listen, we had a verbal, you started seeing there was some kind of verbal agreement, nothing contractual, that what happened wouldn't. And so in the moment on Saturday and even you know, changing some Instagram photos. <laughs> Levy was upset, defending his family. And then I think that uh, cooler heads prevailed. And he went out and said, apologize for causing a distraction and it won't happen again. Yeah. It, um, I, but I do not believe that it, that Joe C looked at him and said, if you don't do this, you're fired. It sounds like that what Joe C would do, yeah, I don't but think so. it sounds like it was, um, an employee that got in trouble at his job and he got pulled into the office. He got reprimanded for it. He, his punishment was go out there and apologize, issue a public apology and move on and say, you're not taking more questions. You've, you made your statement. Let's talk about Tulsa. That's, that's the real world. Yeah. That's, I think that's just the real world. He, yeah. he got in trouble at his job and that's it. Let's move on. I think that's what I think that's about how everybody is now, at least there. Mike did what he had to do. He apologized, and that's, you know, obviously that's what he wanted to, to do, and quit answering those questions. So I, I think it's over until Hart Rowell shows up again. Yeah, do it again. You could get fired. Well, and I mean you, that that's then you're um, at what point subordinate, and it's time to let you go. At but, what point does do we? Is Art Bryles got to have a little bit more? And maybe now is the answer, but a little bit more common sense and go, you know what? I can't get my I can't get my son in law in trouble here. Yeah, that that's the the stubbornness of Art Bryles. Yeah. And maybe even the stubbornness of Jeff Levy as well. A little well. bit, but he Bryles needs to understand too. I'm a lightning rod rod. I'm very polarizing. Me being seen on the field, on Owen Field, my might create a stir. Well, and here's what's it's crazy. It's like how come he didn't think of that? Well, here's what's crazy is Nobody even knew. Until you know, a lot, someone, of time, a lot yeah. of times, you know, if he was, you'd find him. Like, the cameras would find him. But like I told you, I didn't even recognize him. No. When I saw he the picture. Like white hair. When I saw the picture, long. I went, who in the heck is that talking? Yeah. And then I was like, oh. It's br- he was, br- I think, trying to be a little incognito. Oh, for I sure. he was trying to. Well, and like I said, you know, we've seen how many times where the camera finds this player's dad or whatever. Well, yeah. If, if anybody would have known he was there. The cameras would have found him, yeah. And so that's why it's almost like, dude, you got away with it. You you got you, you were there. You watched the game. Just stay in the suite or go to the car, and none of this happens. Um, 
or ask did you two like the rules on Friday night with Texas compared to Oklahoma as far as college, uh, high school football? You know, they're more the, – Oh, the, 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 the playing rules. The playing rules, yes. You know, they're more similar now than they, than they have been. And, the, and the, one, the one rule that – congratulations, Oklahoma. You finally fixed it. Is holding. Offensive holding. Because in ten, until this year, that was a spot foul. And so if you had a quarterback – running around crazy 10 yards behind the line of scrimmage and you got called for holding there, that's where they marked it off from. Mm-hmm. And we've seen in the first couple of games here that penalty is now marked off. If it's behind the line of scrimmage where the penalty occurs, it's marked off from the line of scrimmage. Not worthy of so it, instead yeah. of a 20-yard holding call, you just get 10 like regular football. And then, of course, if it's downfield, it's marked from there. Like it always a, was. The rule I want Oklahoma to adopt is let them bring it out of the end zone. Yeah, that's kickoffs. another one. I, I want that one. But other, you know, it's, I get player safety and everything, but I, I, I just, I think I find it a little silly. It's that's one that that's better. It's always been better in Texas than than Oklahoma at college. Um, but outside of that, I mean, the clock stopped just like it does here for first downs. I was wondering. We actually we actually wondered about that. Yeah. If it would be like the college timing rules now, they haven't UIL hasn't gotten there yet. So, you know, outside of that one, it's I don't fairly. Think you can. There's just a few. There's just a few, a few yeah. things that are a little bit different. The clock running thing. I don't think you really. I don't think you can do that because it's a shorter game in 12, high school. Yeah, twelve minute. It would be a really quarters. really quick game and maybe a low scoring game, and it, it really throws a plate uh, a game plan in the loop. You know. Oh, there's no doubt. I mean, like that. That drive to start the third quarter, if it had been the college rules, it would have been the over. Elks would have ran the third quarter out without scoring. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and only and only got like sixty yards. Right, <laughs> yeah. right. I mean, nice for us when we have to travel an hour and a half, but but not when you're down. Oh sure, yeah. yeah it, it, and I, I'm still surprised it hasn't affected. I think it will eventually. Some of these college games that are clearly shorter than they ever have been. Mm-hmm. Uh, what do you think? Of t- I mean, listen, Texas was awesome. There's no way. I'm going to sit here and try to make excuses how they weren't because they were. But I will ask this question: Are they? Is it because Texas is that good, or are we seeing some cracks in the Bama facade? I'm going to talk out both sides of my face. I think it's a little it's, bit it's of hard both. not to, right? Yeah, I, I'm I'm really leaning on the fact that it was week two, and come early November, Bama could have a couple losses, and Texas could have a couple losses. Well, those were two mediocre teams that played each other. Back in September, you know, I'd like to think Texas is good. It makes everybody around them good, including Oklahoma. They have to be good to compete with Texas, and and then obviously that means transferring over to the SEC. Well, I, so I'm kind of like, okay, they're good but not great. Let's wait and see. That's my answer about Texas. Alabama, on the other hand, I can see a little bit where the 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 tower is is crumbling a little bit. Um, I heard this said yesterday afternoon that. You know, is there, are we seeing a little bit of stubbornness from Saban and his approach on building a team? Everybody's embracing the portal and getting a lot of success in the transfer portal all over the country. I mean, look what's happening up in Notre Dame. Their quarterback came from Wake Forest. Obviously, USC and Lincoln Riley's approach, he had that here at Oklahoma. Oklahoma still is not shying away from the portal. But you got some guys, some coaches are, are kind of standoff about it. Saban, Dabo. Yeah, maybe. but Saban will use it. Yeah, but- Saban does. Saban will use it. He uses it how I think it ought to be used, and that's like an old JUCO. Mm-hmm. He knows he needed a quarterback. He went out and got one. He just didn't get one that's any good. Well, yeah, you know he should have taken the one that went to Notre Dame, not the one from Notre Dame. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, or, yeah. or even, I mean, what? It, one of the here's the thing about the portal. Yeah, it worked when it works. It works. But you know who's not working? Who it's not working for right now? Spencer Sanders. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Portal's a two-way street. I mean, man. I mean, it, it, and he's a better version of Jalen Milrow. That's to me the the thing about Bama is this: they don't have a quarterback for the first time in a while, and their and, and their their skill positions, their receivers, aren't as good as they have been, and maybe that's a function of the quarterback. But even last year with with Bryce Young. Didn't it? It felt like Bama was lacking receiver talent. 
And it's probably going to feel like that when you go from Devontae Smith and Jalen Waddell and who, you know what I'm saying? I mean, they had some incredible players and they're just a little bit of a notch down. And I think that's part of it on the Bama side. And, and that rule applies at the quarterback position. Sure it when, does. When they went from starting all the way, I mean, where can you start? I mean, you can go back, way back. They've had consistently good quarterback after quarterback after quarterback. But it really honestly exploded with Tua. Yeah. When when Tua started going crazy offensively to go along with what they've always done defensively, that's when they became like, oh, my Lord, how do you beat them? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Drew's exactly like me. They look at the, the portal as a – it, they look at it as Juco used to be because he's done such a good job recruiting. And I, and I think that's how you have to – if you're a program like that, that's how you have to be because you have the pick of the litter with the high school kids. The difference is this actually – if if you miss a couple or some of them get in trouble or whatever, that's where the portal can come in handy for those guys. He needs to embrace the portal – like Patty Gasso has. Yeah, that's, that's, did you see that ranking that came out yes, with them? They're no, the number one team in in the, the portal that's right. era. That's right. Oh, they lose Jordy Ball. They went and recruited the number one team out of the portal. That's where you know, and and that's where he messed up, either having too much faith in Jalen Milrow, or here here's another thing about the portal and with quarterbacks especially. To get one of those guys, those top notch Sam Hartman. You know what you need to have. A guaranteed spot for him to play. You're, not, you know, there's, you're not going to get a really good guy to come in and start competing with dudes because it's kind of their their last chance. Mm-hmm. And so that's it. Just their quarterback isn't any good. J- Jalen Milrow isn't there yet, and Texas's is. Ewers looked phenomenal, and the, and here's the thing about the Texas team that we haven't seen in a long, long time. They had offensive and defensive line dudes that were standing up to and getting the better of Alabama dudes. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's where Texas was really, really impressive. And that's where you get a comment like Herb Street made about Texas being a couple of years ahead of Oklahoma going into the SEC. I think he's looking specifically right there. But what's at on what campus what's right on now. campus on the defensive line, especially at Texas, it took, is a lot of people different. took offense to what Her, uh, Herb Street said when he said a couple years ahead. And keep in mind, though, look what OU is doing right now That's recruiting. Right. I but, mean, there's David Stones; they're, they're coming. Yeah, they're, but, but they're, they're, they're bringing in there at yeah, Texas. Right. They're bringing in true freshmen. Where Texas is going to have dudes that are juniors. Yep. Um, but they were awesome, and Texas deserves all the love that they're getting right now. How long can Mike Gundy play three quarterbacks? Uh, I put a date down. Okay. It will be – he will make a decision not not during the first or before the first Big 12 game versus Iowa State. I still think he can do what they're doing and beat Iowa State. I think it's the Friday Night Lights, October 6th, when Kansas State comes to town. He's going to name a guy, and it's going to be the guy he's going to ride with for the rest of the year. That's my prediction. How about you? Next Monday. You think next Monday? Yes, going into conference play. You think so before Iowa State? Yes. Now, that doesn't mean that he can't go with a guy, pick the wrong one like he normally does, and then change to the right one. Right. But I think you he, you have to, he cannot go into a conference game thinking he's going to play three quarterbacks in some kind of merry-go-round like he has been. That, that just He can't do it. I don't think. Not three. Now, maybe if you want to eliminate one, that's still not the right choice. You need to make a choice and then see what happens I just think he, at Iowa I State. I think he can get away with it at Iowa State. He can if he does it against Kansas State. And I also think he's trying to find any edge he can over an opponent. And by doing this, by making them prepare for three guys instead of one. Yeah, that's an interesting part of it. Because I maybe mean, he doesn't announce it at, at I, before the Iowa State game, but he goes in with the plan to have sure, this one. Uh, that's why my yeah. approach was with yeah. Kansas State. He, he doesn't announce it, but he goes in. Okay, well, ten minutes for a game. It looks like it's going to be so and so him, yeah. and it turns out it's going to be him the whole game. How good's Colorado really? I think I've said I'm going to say this more than once today. I think they're good, not great. 
I, they're obviously way better than last year. I think their skill position is awesome to the point where if things go right, like what they did in Fort Worth, everything went right with them. The skill position was was the highlight of that game for Colorado that won them that game. But there are other stuff, you know. You still it's, it, football is more than just skill position. You still got to play defense, um, defend the run, and everything like that. I think they'll be in games like with Oregon and USC, but I don't really see them winning them. So I'll just say they're good, not great. Yeah, I think their skill guys are about as good as anybody's in the country. Yeah, I'm with you. The upfront guys, maybe not there yet. They're better than I thought. I really, I really thought last week was going to be a massive let down, let down spot for them. With Nebraska, I didn't not not peeking down their leg and all I, that. I didn't think it was going to be a letdown for n- not all the reasons of, of the distraction of being the home debut for for Prime coming off the big win on the road. I didn't think it was going to be a distraction because I thought Jimmy's and Joe's were a lot better yeah, than what ne- Nebraska. Nebraska has. just is that just bad. simply as that. <laughs> yeah. it's, Nebraska's not good. Yeah, they're just that bad. Uh, yeah, on the text, will he's exactly right. We'll know in two weeks. Colorado goes to Eugene. Yeah. We'll know exactly how good they yeah. are. Speaking of the Pac-12, is the Pac-12 the best conference? It sure looks that way. What do they got? How many ranked teams? They got eight. Eight ranked teams, uh, two in the top ten, USC and Washington. Looking at it right here. You got Colorado 18, Oregon 13. Yeah, so that that's almost safe to say. Um, I mean, the SEC and, dare I say, the ACC has a little bit of an argument. SEC has the number one team, uh, but then ACC, they have Florida State, uh, top five, what, three, and then Carolina and Duke and Miami. Miami looked good against A&M. Crystal Ball, I think, might finally get it going. I mean, I say finally, it's the second year. So, but yeah, I mean, based on the number of ranked teams and what they have done, they look really, really good. We mentioned Colorado, USC, they're doing what we expect. That was a nice win for Oregon to go to Lubbock. Utah as well. Utah, yeah. To go well, that was that Waco, right? Yeah, it was. Yeah. Is Utah the only team to beat two power five so far? Without looking it up, that sounds about right. Did SC SC beat Stanford? Who do they beat? No. Nope. No. They just got one. Oh, uh, Colorado. Well yeah, Colorado. Colorado. But a team with a pulse, Utah, I mean it's Florida I'm just saying two power lo- five wins is That's way better yeah. than most people are, are right now. We suspected this about the Pac-12. With quarterbacks, the quarterbacks. Yes. quarterback, 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 quarterback. They have so many good ones. We absolutely expected it. And look who's all ranked here. You got Caleb Williams in USC. You got Sanders in Colorado. You have Penix. Penix at Washington. You got Bo Nix at Oregon. We you haven't got, seen rising you yet. You got ukulele at Oregon State. I don't even know who's quarterback in UCLA. Uh, it's the Dante Moore. Five star true freshman supposed to be a stud. There you go. And you're right, haven't even seen rising at Utah. Who's who's quarterback in Washington State? Now that's there the they one. all who snuck in at twenty three. That's the one I don't know. Let's look here. Wazoo. Or right, so over, let's me, go back to overreactions here. Are we overreacting the lackluster start from the SEC? I think Or is it George is, is gonna carry the banner for him? Oh, I think that they've played some. They they you you normally see them win these games when they challenge themselves outside of the of the league. You normally see them win those games, and they just haven't. They haven't done it. LSU just got pounded in that second half against Florida State. Maybe there's just a little bit of a step down. I mean, their best is their best win. Ole Miss beating Tulane. Yeah, and that was without Pratt. Michael Pratt didn't even play quarterback for Tulane, and that was still a heck of a game. Some guy named Cameron Ward is the quarterback at Washington State. I even have questions about Tennessee. Yeah, man, that's they haven't been this week. Crazy used to be one dominant. of the, They've given up twenty five points to only scored seventy nine. This week used to be one of the best weeks. Going, to, they're going to the swamp, but man, how good is Florida? Does that? I think Tennessee's as large a favorite as they've ever been going to the swamp. What is that spread? Like seven and a half. It's not that much, but that just shows you how good Florida's normally been, especially there. All right, who's your top ten? I'll go ten to one. Okay. I'll 
Utah 10, Notre Dame 9, Washington 8, Ohio State 7. I finally put Penn State above Ohio State at 6. I'm not there yet with Texas because you asked me about the conference thing. I think USC is better than Texas. So Texas at 5, USC 4, Michigan 3, Florida State 2, Georgia 1. Okay, I went Ohio State 10. They have not been very good no, yet. No, no, they haven't. Washington 9, and I really almost put them higher. They've been impressive. Now, Boise State and Tulsa have been the op- the opponents, but, man, they've been good. I put Utah 8 because they've beaten two Power 5 teams, one on the road. Uh, Penn State 7, after struggling a little bit with West Virginia. And that, that's a little bit of preseason bias, too, because I liked them preseason, and they looked awesome against a terrible team the other Delaware, maybe. They almost put up 70. So, Penn State 7. I've got Notre Dame 6. I was really – I thought they would struggle at some point against NC State. On Saturday, they just pounded them. Three touchdown win. So I've got them six. USC five. They've been good. Very, very, very good. Michigan four. Texas three. Florida State two. Georgia one. And the only reason I've got Georgia one is because I just can't bring myself to move them off of it. No. To me, Florida State and Texas have the best two wins. Texas has the best win on the season. And so – I really probably ought to have them number one because they've done more than anybody else has so far. But they're just – the way that Florida State dominated LSU, and Texas did it to Bama in the, in the fourth quarter on the road, and that's the difference. You know what? I probably ought to have Texas higher if I'm going to rank them on, of what what they've done. But those teams have been impressive. There's no doubt about it. The question is, is the Pac-12 better than the Big 12? Boy, it sure looks like it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that, that's an easy question to answer. It looks like it right now, anyway. Yep. I mean, they went head-to-head twice on, on Big 12 fields, and Pac-12 got right. both wins. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's crazy. The last hurrah of the Pac-12 might be the best season they've had in the playoff era, for sure. Step aside, come back, wrap up a Paul Jones Drug Tuesday with some high school football talk next. Paul Jones Drug is Elk City's most experienced compounding pharmacy, meaning they can custom make your prescription medications to your doctor's specifications, safely and effectively providing you with exactly what you need. And for your convenience, Paul Jones Drug has a drive through pickup window as well as curbside service for testing and vaccinations and offers free local delivery. Just a couple reasons you should choose Paul Jones Drug, 809 North Main Street in Elk City. I'm Rodney Skinner with Paul Jones Drug, and I promise we provide care you can trust. The Skinny on Sports. Welcome back. Skinny on Sports, 98.1 FM, the Sports Animal, wrapping up a Paul Jones Drug Tuesday with a little high school football talk. Paul Jones Drug, 809 North Main, care you can trust right here in the Elk City area. Give them a call, 225-2121. The individual packaging for your daily meds or convenience packaging staple at paul jones drug you don't have to load up your pill caddy you don't have to know how many pills for how many days or whatever day it is no 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 no. they'll do it for you with the individual packaging just open up the package take your meds boom you're done dme which is durable medical equipment that's your walkers canes crutches wraps braces etc gifts and greeting cards as well down there some really cool gifts and greeting cards they accept most insurances as well at paul jones drug 809 North Main, care you can trust. All right, Jared. High school football on the docket this week. Of course, the Elks uh, with a near impossible task for not only the, I mean, just for anybody in the state of Oklahoma. With Carl Albert coming to town, the Titans, six out of the last seven years have been 5A state champions. They're off to a, a roaring start, 3 and 0. Avenged both the losses they suffered last year to Coweta and Muskogee. They find themselves number one in Class 5A. No surprise there. Looking at the 4A poll, the Elks drop a couple of spots with that loss to Canadian. And maybe not even the loss to Canadian more than uh, as much as some other teams winning. You know, Ada, somebody you mentioned in the preseason. And here they are, 3-0. and They started unranked, and now they're clear up to number six. And I, And I think here's just the truth of it. That name, that team... It's one of those that people want to be good again, right? Mm -hmm. It's been a long time since they've really been good. 
So I think that name will go up the, the, the pole a little bit. Whether or not it should or not, we'll, we'll find out. But the Elks 7, Clinton 9, Weatherford 10. I'm a little surprised Weatherford dropped. Why? With the I, win. No, no, not why. Why mm-hmm. do they drop? I, I don't get it either. Uh, El Reno's because nobody's seen El Reno. They don't realize that El, uh, it, El Reno's a good team. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And they're, But the problem is El Reno's, what, 1 and 2? Lost close to Piedmont, lost close to Weatherford. So that I think that's why, and and moving up Ada. But I think those you know those are going to take care of themselves as far as with the district. Anything you see kind of weird? Four A, you know, Blanchard suffered a loss to Piedmont. They dropped a spot. Piedmont in the middle of the pack, at the top ten at number six and five A. Uh, the only thing weird is weather for dropping. That doesn't make sense. Drop them after a win. Um, you know, I was uh, honestly last week it, the whole poll was unchanged, and then you know, I had a feeling about Ada. Um, I, to be honest, Clinton dropping a couple spots after fighting tooth and nail with Heritage number one Heritage Hall after unable to score against McGinnis week before, but there they are. They drop them two spots. I guess you almost have to if you're one and two, but that that name carries a lot of cachet. I think that kept him in the top ten maybe, but I thought well. You know, they're losing a game like that. And same thing with Elk City. You're losing to a really good Canadian team out of Texas who is the favorite to win their another state title this year. I'd be shocked if they didn't. And you drop them two more. But it's almost out of necessity when you have someone like Newcastle who hasn't lost. You have Ada, there you go, uh, who's 3-0. and um, So that's why I guess a little bit of the shakeup. Still perplexed about the Weatherford thing. I, I wouldn't have dropped them at all. I mean, quite frankly, I'd have Weatherford ahead of Clinton. Me too. Just because of that win against – we've seen El Reno going to El Reno and win. That's a heck of a win. Yeah. They both beat Kingfisher pretty similarly. Clinton didn't give up – by exactly the same amount of points. Clinton didn't get give up a point. Weatherford scored more, da-da-da. Um, they both lost to good teams pretty handily, I guess. You know, Newcastle and, and McGinnis and then, of course, that last game. I would I would have them ahead, but Weatherford will have a chance to jump up because when you look at the top ten games this week, four A is in a whole bunch of these. Number one game this this week, according to the Oklahoman, is Class four A number four Tuttle at number five uh, A number three Guthrie. I think that's a that's a cool game. Obviously, Weatherford hosting Elgin. Elgin's five A number five. So that's uh, that, that's one there that we'll obviously keep our eye on. You got Poto, Class 4A's number two against Chandler, which is 2A number seven, a couple of undefeated teams, and then number one Wagner. And this is a pretty big, this is a bigger rivalry than we realize, thanks to our man Hunter Hayes, the former Grove Ridge runner, allowing us to, you know, telling us that. But Grove 2 0, they go to Wagner. So, a bunch of 4A teams in these top 10 games this week as we exit out of non-district play and exit into district play after this week. Um, so, it's going to be going to be an interesting week, I think, of, of these last. Cause, you know, it's, it does seem like a lot of times these last week, it's more of a rivalry week. Maybe that those have been moved back to, to week two because of the week zero stuff now. Or a lot of people, you know, it used to be mm-hmm. the last district game was week three and or non district to go into district. Now, with week zero, some of those games may have been moved back a week with your Jinx Union and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. But there, there's still some really interesting ones. Anything else that catches your eye where you're kind of interested to see results? No, those ones you mentioned, um, Tuttle Guthrie, that, that always gives us a fun game. Uh, and then of course, Weatherford Elgin. I mentioned that yesterday. I think that has the potential to be a high-scoring one, like we saw over in uh, Clinton last week. I think we could see somewhere a final score of forty-five to forty or something like that if both offenses are clicking. Apparently, Elgin's is. Weatherford might be starting to click a little bit with their offense and Nixon. That could that could be really, really a high-scoring game. It's gonna be a fun one. Yep. And you don't see very you don't see offers in here very often but i think a couple of teams 
Well, the defending 6A2 champs, Stillwater, 0 for 2, 0 and 2, and they're still number four. There's a lot of respect for them, even though they lost their coach, Tucker Bernard, against 0 and 2 Norman. And I know Norman's lost to some pretty good teams. Norman North being one of those is one of the more high, highly ranked teams in 6A uh, Division One. So good stuff. Good stuff. Uh, question How good is Carl Albert? On a scale of 1 to 10, 11. They I are, mean, they are really good. Easily, or uh, how about this? No doubt a top five team, regardless of class, in the state of Oklahoma. And probably you could put that up to top three. Would you, is, that's not overstating it, is it? To say they're one of the best three teams in Oklahoma, period, regardless of class? I mean, Bixby obviously would be in that conversation. Them. Union. Yeah, they're one of those. Yeah. Very good. One of those. Yeah. One one of the the, the very, very best teams in Oklahoma. Uh, This just in, Aaron Rodgers will miss the rest of the season. Torn Achilles. Torn Achilles. He's out. Done. I think we all knew that was coming. It was just a matter of making it official now, with an MRI. He's 39. Is he done forever? That may be the first thing we talk about tomorrow. You've been listening to the Skinny on Sports podcast with Aaron Cow. Be sure to hit that subscribe button to get alerts of when the latest podcast is available. Thanks for listening. That ball is blistered to right. Way. Paul Jones Drug offers a free service that makes taking your daily medication safe and easy. It's called convenience packaging, meaning they can combine all of your daily medications and put them in sealed separate daily packages. This process replaces you from having to fill your daily medication dispenser. And as always, Paul Jones Drug prepares individual blister packaging for long-term care patients. With their drive through window, curbside service, and free local delivery, it's just more reasons you should choose Paul Jones Drug. 809 North Main Street, Milk City. I'm Rodney Skinner with Paul Jones Drug, and I promise we provide care you can trust.